My dearly beloved in Christ, it is fitting that on Mother's Day, we should not only think of our own mothers, but above all, we should call to mind our Heavenly Mother, our Blessed Mother, our spiritual Mother. And you know that the entire month of May is especially dedicated to Our Lady. And so it is a fitting time for us to ask ourselves, do I have the devotion to our Blessed Mother that I should? Do I have the tender, the strong, the deep devotion to our Blessed Mother that is a mark of every true Christian? For indeed, who loves our Blessed Mother more than Jesus himself? We could not possibly even approach the devotion, the honor, the love that Jesus has for his own mother. And how pleased he is when we also honor his mother, when we reflect upon her greatness, her virtues, her excellence, her prerogatives, how important her role is in our lives as the mediatrix of all graces, the co-redemptrix, our spiritual mother who has such a deep love and compassion and interest in our spiritual and also temporal well-being. So let us then examine ourselves. Do I have the devotion to our Blessed Mother that I should? St. Louis Marie de Montfort says that a true devotion to Mary has five qualities or characteristics. First of all, it is something interior. It is not just saying certain prayers, putting flowers before her statue, performing certain acts of devotion. But it is, a, it is a strong, deep, tender feeling of love in our hearts that we preserve for Our Lady. So it's interior. It is also tender, like a child's love for its mother. It is a tender devotion. It is a devotion that leads us to imitate Our Lady to imitate her virtues, to grow spiritually. It also must be constant. That means that we don't just think of Our Lady every year during the month of May or on her feast days and then forget about her. It is there all the time. It is there continually, every day in our lives. And also it should be disinterested, which means we don't just pray to Our Lady when we need something. We go to her, we beg her help because we need something. But rather we honor her because she deserves it. And because we love her. Not even seeking something in return, at least not all the time. Although certainly nothing wrong with praying to Our Lady. So reflect upon these qualities and also upon the fact that devotion to our Blessed Mother will manifest itself interiorly and exteriorly. So St. Louis also talks about this, the practice of devotion to Our Lady, because some people make their devotion, their practice of devotion to Our Lady, consist only in external things. Participating in a procession, saying certain prayers, doing something exterior, exteriorly. Those are, are certainly good very good practices of devotion. But remember that the most important part is the interior. And so let me read to you what St. Louis de Montfort says about the practices of devotion, the interior practices. There are several interior practices of true devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Here are the principal ones. Number one, to honor her as the worthy mother of God with the worship of hyperdulia, that is to say, to esteem her and honor her above all the other saints as the masterpiece of grace and the first after Jesus Christ. Second, to meditate on her virtues, her privileges, and her actions. Third, to contemplate her grandeurs. Fourth, to make acts of love, of praise, and of gratitude to her. Number five, to invoke her cordially. Six, to offer ourselves to her and unite ourselves with her. Seven, to do all our actions with the view of pleasing her. And eight, to, to begin and continue and finish all of our actions 
by her, with her, in her, and for her. And he goes on in length to explain what he means by that. But the point here is that this is what we mean by interior practices. Now, the exterior are good. The interior practices inspire us or motivate us to pray the rosary, to put flowers before her shrine, to perform various exterior practices. And then those practices, in turn, feed and foster the interior. So we must have both, a deep love in our hearts, and then we show it by the prayers we say in our practices. And speaking of prayers, I would like to just mention what are the primary prayers that we say to Our Lady? Well, the first place goes to the Hail Mary. This prayer is so excellent because it begins with the words that God himself addressed to Our Lady through the medium of the Archangel, St. Michael, St. Gabriel, rather, at the Annunciation. Hail, he said to her, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And then when Our Lady visited her cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth said, inspired by the Holy Ghost, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And then the church added the second half of the Hail Mary, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Imagine all of the Hail Marys that we say throughout our lives. We are asking Our Lady to be there and to help us when we come to that last hour of our lives, that all-important hour upon which our fate in eternity hinges. So we're asking Our Lady every day and many times a day to help us in that hour. So the Hail Mary, the most excellent prayer to Our Lady. And then, of course, very closely connected with that is the beautiful prayer of the Rosary in which we pray many, multiple Hail Marys and our fathers, and we meditate on the lives of Jesus and Mary. And we always remember that Our Lady at Fatima requested that we pray the Rosary every day. And if there was ever a time in the history of the world when the recitation of the Rosary, the family Rosary especially, is imperative, that time is today. We also have the Hail Holy Queen, a beautiful prayer, a prayer greatly loved by Catholics, one that we pray daily after Mass. Most of us add it also after our daily rosary. This prayer goes back to, I believe, the 1100s, where it was written by a religious, and is such a, a tender prayer where we invoke Our Lady as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. St. Alphonsus Liguori wrote an entire book on the Hail Holy Queen called The Glories of Mary. And in each chapter, he takes the Hail Holy Queen one phrase at a time and explains it, quoting from the saints and the doctors of the church and so forth. And he has examples and prayers also accompanying these explanations. So that is a beautiful book, which I will say more about in a minute. After the Hail Holy Queen, we also have the beautiful prayer composed by St. Bernard of Clairvaux, a great devotee of Our Lady, called the Memorari. Remember, O Most Gracious Virgin Mary. And that prayer is very consoling because we say in that prayer that never has it been heard that anyone fled to our Blessed Mother, implored her help, or sought her aid, and was left without assistance, without aid. There are many other prayers, the Subtum Presidium, many various prayers and devotions to Our Lady. So let us make a devout use of these prayers. Now, something else I want to speak about, at least briefly, is the importance of reading a book about Our Lady. Because reading a spiritual book about Our Blessed Mother will foster your devotion, will inspire you. There are many beautiful books about Our Lady that have been written. I mentioned The Glories of Mary, which actually is in two parts. The first half is about the Hail Holy Queen, and the second is on the various feast days of Our Lady and her sorrows. But what is beautiful about this book, not only the writings, the explanation, but also the stories that St. Alphonsus gives. 
And we all like to read stories and we remember the stories. And these, these examples show the solicitude of Our Lady for her clients, for her children. And I'll mention a couple of them to you in a minute. Another excellent book is called True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary by St. Louis Marie de Montfort, in which he explains the act of total consecration to Jesus through Mary. And I just quoted from that regarding interior practice of devotion. There are uh, a couple of books that you can read that are written primarily for the month of May. They have 31 short chapters. One is called The Love of Mary. I highly recommend it. Another is called Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament, which is especially regarding that title of Our Lady, but it has, again, 31 short sections, so you could read it during a month, and it doesn't have to be May, any month. There's a book called The Path of Mary by Mother Mary Potter on uh, the total consecration. There is The Reign of Jesus Through Mary, another wonderful book on applying the total consecration to the various exercises of the day, and many others. So if you have not read a book about our Blessed Mother for some time, this would be a way of nurturing your devotion to Our Lady, helping it to grow and to, and to develop into the devotion which we all need in these times especially. So I mentioned a couple of the, yesterday I was reading through the glories of Mary, especially reading a lot of the examples. I'd like to give you a couple examples. One he mentions, which is quite fascinating, is there was a young man who was going to leave home. He was going to go forth and make his mark in the world, get employment, and his mother was very worried about him, and so she made him promise that he would say at least every day a Hail Mary, and that he would add the ejaculation, Holy Mother of God, pray for me now and at the hour of my death, which is also the last part of the Hail Mary, but that he would add that after the Hail Mary. And he promised to do so, and he was faithful to this devotion. And he said the Hail Mary and the ejaculation every day. Well, sadly, as time went on, he became lax in the practice of his faith, and it ended up, he fell on hard times, and he joined up with a band of brigands, and they would rob people on the road, and even committed murders. So here he was part of that group, and he was finally caught and sentenced to death. And the day before he was to die, he was there in prison, feeling obviously very sad and forlorn, and he just prayed this prayer, the Hail Mary and the ejaculation over and over. And the next day, as he was being led to execution, he saw a statue of Our Lady. And out of his love for Our Lady, he asked the guards, he said, will you just let me kiss the feet of the statue of Our Lady? And they thought, well, no harm in that. There's no way he can escape. He's bound with chains and will be right there. So he kissed the feet of Our Lady. And the statue moved, and Our Lady's hand reached down and grabbed him by the arm. And she held on so tightly that the guards couldn't peel him away from the grasp of the statue. And all of the people who were around were crying out, miracle, miracle, seeing the statue move and what happened. And they said, mercy, mercy. And in fact, the magistrate who was in charge did end up forgiving the man, um, not condemning him to death or allowing him to go free, and he lived a very devout, holy life for the rest of his life. Another interesting example has to do with a Dominican saint, a priest, St. Hyacinth. And St. Hyacinth was from Poland, and he went to Rome in the early 1200s as a young priest and met St. Dominic. So he became a Dominican, went back to Poland and founded many monasteries of Dominican priests, many religious houses, and he preached throughout Scandinavia, Northern Europe, and Russia. And one day he was in Kiev, in the Ukraine. And he was at the Dominican house, and they received word that a band of Tartars, who were a tribe very hostile to the people in that area, were approaching the city. They were attacking the city. And the people needed to save themselves. They needed to flee immediately. 
So he went right into the chapel and took the Blessed Sacrament out of the tabernacle to flee and to save the Blessed Sacrament. But as he was leaving the church, there was a statue of Our Lady, a stone statue by the entrance of the church. And she said, Hyacinth, are you going to take my son and leave me here to the mercy of these, this tribe? And he said, but, but mother, I can't take, pick you up. You're so heavy. It was a stone statue. And she said, well, I will help you. Try it. And he picked up the statue and it was like a light as a feather. So there he goes out with the blessed sacrament in one hand, statue of Our Lady in the other arm, and he fled with the other Dominicans in that house. And as they fled out of the city, they came to the river. And they walked across the river as though it were solid ground. So several miracles there in this incident. But it shows our Blessed Mother's love for our Blessed Mother, how she helps us. That example shows her connection, we might say, to the Blessed Sacrament. Tomorrow is a feast of Our Lady of course, the anniversary of the first apparition of Our Lady at Fatima, but it also is the feast honoring the title Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament. And we should think about how Our Lady spent the 20 or so years that she lived after our Lord's ascension into heaven. She lived on the Blessed Sacrament attended Mass by St. John the Evangelist every day, received communion from his hands. And she lived, we might say, in union with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. So that is something we should ask Our Lady to help us in our devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. So I encourage you once again to summarize, to read a book this month about Our Lady, to examine yourself on your devotion to Our Lady, and to foster that devotion interiorly and exteriorly. Father Faber, who translated the book True Devotion in 1862 from French into English, wrote the preface. And he says in this preface, he says, the problem in England, and we could say the same of America, which at that time, he's speaking in the 1860s, he says, our problem is that we, don't, we do not have enough devotion to our Blessed Mother. Catholics are afraid of their devotion. They know that Protestants don't agree with it, and so maybe they hide it. They, they don't practice the devotion as they should. And he said, the solution to all of our problems is a greater, a stronger, a deeper devotion to our Blessed Mother. Every difficulty, every problem we have, whether it's a spiritual problem or a physical or temporal problem, devotion to Our Lady is the solution. So let us at least this month resolve that we will give more attention to our devotion to Our Lady, that we will repair what is deficient, and that we will give her the honor and the love that she so richly deserves and by which we will obtain the graces we need to persevere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.